Well, as you see, we're about to head out on Lock Inch uh, and head down the Spay River in Scotland. <laughs> Very excited. Uh, I've always wanted to uh, go back to Scotland. And I've always wanted to do the Spay River. And uh, we're going out to get down with some incredible people. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Very exciting. Um, Justine, why is your uh, website called Cackle TV? <laughs> That's the chutney. That's the shape droppings. <laughs> Just be careful out there, I say, folks. Be careful. The haggis is a fearsome beastie. Things will happen one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're round about here, I would say, um, <laughs> which is quite a nice place to be rather than there. But we're on the, the shores of Loch Inch and Loch, the, the River Spey starts a little bit south of us, but we're doing the classic section, which is, and it is really great, starting at Loch Inch near Aviemore, and then we'll paddle on down the river all the way to the sea. Um, if at any stage you look around and you can't see any banks in any direction, and in, in particular if you can't see me, you're already at the sea, Kevin. We did call it for a little while lock two centimetres, as you've probably <laughs> gathered, but as part of the reaction to the voting system, we decided to go back to its original uh, name. Are we a tad nervous about what we're doing? Uh, we? Is that the royal we or is that my... I can only speak for myself, but... I'm not actually nervous, I probably should be. I'm, I recognize that I'm very inexperienced and very rusty in a canoe, but I'm not nervous, is that weird? I'm probably gonna, probably gonna regret saying that. <laughs> I'm definitely aware of my, um, my, I was gonna say inadequacies, but that's the wrong word. I, I know what I don't know, or at least I think I do. <laughs> but I'm, I'm in good company, so uh, you know, what, why would I be worried? She's asking me all these questions, and I'm not a whitewater runner, so she's asking me about the throw bag on, I don't know, uh, and uh, all the, the puff bags in the front that I don't know much about with the flotation things, I don't know. We're the numpties. Well, I don't think you're really a numpty. You're just saying that to make me <laughs> no, feel better. No, I'm a numpty. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I knew what I was doing, I'd be a numpty. I'm learning a lot of words here, by the way. Uh, cracker, uh, bollocks. Uh, what else? I didn't teach him that no. one. Oh, is that a bad word? <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> oh, this trip is bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I beat that out. Is it bad? It's not that bad. It's just I'm thinking it's a part from the male anatomy. That what was it? <laughs> you do not know what it was. You have two of them. Oh! <laughs> cut, cut. <laughs> Stretching my balmy? <laughs> just found out what that was. Hi, Mom. What's <laughs> the upper spay like? The Upper Spey, well, once you come out of Loch Inch, which was this beautiful little amphitheatre of autumnal colours when we when we left, um, it's quite small to start off with. It's, it's a sort of a, a gentle flow out of the loch. And um, it's, a, it's, you know, it's like a little gravel stream, but then you've got tributaries coming in from the mountains, which starts to pick up a bit of volume. It's not too steep. In the first day and a half, we drop about 20 meters, and then the next couple of days, we're going to drop 200 meters. So to start off with, not too much flow, not too steep. So it's it's a nice way to ease into the trip. Uh, surrounded by beautiful trees all around, there's birch and alder and Scotch pine, and it's just a really nice corridor down through the valley as we move away from the mountains. Tomorrow it'll flatten out a little bit more. And it's going to be it's going to be more of a paddle. Um, we've got less flow in the morning, but as I say, once we get to the end of that flat section, it goes downhill from there, and that's where the fun really starts.
What did we just go by? Well, you didn't believe us until this point about the haggis population. We've just gone past proof positive there's a haggis nesting box in a tree. And you know, that's if, the, if you can't take that as proof that they're living in this area, they are quite nocturnal and they're quite elusive, but they're there. You need to watch yourself. They are there. Okay, they're trying to scare me with this haggis thing. They said there's a evil creature out here called the haggis. And if you go out in the woods to, to pee or something by yourself, or you get too close to the bank, the haggis will get you. <laughs> the only problem is every, every person I've met on the river have talked about the haggis and warned me about it. Oh, the haggis. You gotta be really, really careful about the haggis, Kevin. It's much more serious than bears. The tourist board tends to downplay it because if people really got the truth about this, then you would, you would scare off a lot of the tourists. So you've got to be very careful. They're normally up on the hills, um, but these sort of wild woodlands is a bad place, which is why we would normally hang the food and hang Canadians in the trees. You can easily underestimate them because they're quite small. Uh, they've got thick fur and they look quite cute and cuddly. They've got thick because they, they need to withstand the cold in the hills, but sometimes they'll come down into the valleys for a bit of shelter and they're, when they're hungry, and that's when you really need to be careful because they're vicious. They look cute and cuddly, but they're vicious. So beware, beware. Maybe it exists. Maybe look, this monster exists too. It's great, huh? I've never traveled in the woods with these guys. I've known them for years. Good friends, see them at all the shows and stuff like that, but never traveling in the woods. And you got Justine, she's an amazing filmmaker, amazing world traveler in a kayak, and she's showing me a few tricks on how to film. And uh, just love her, love her laugh. <laughs> and uh, we got Ray that actually has traveled this river, I don't know how much. He's like the Bill Mason of the, of the UK and uh, knows a lot about running white water, knows a lot about safety, knows a lot about the history of the river, hey, and just an all-around good guy to be with. Big, uh, and we got Paul, he's an incredible bushcraft uh, person. He's just an all-around good person to be with in the woods. Really feel uh, comfortable with them all, and I don't know, good friendship, good time. Love Scotland, I love it. A number of different worlds represented here, really I think three. There's Paul, bushcraft, uh, there's Justine and sea kayaking, there's me and canoe, and then there's Kevin's world. And seeing it's a single occupancy, whether we count it as the fourth one or not, I'm a little unclear. First uh, lunch, the first day, what do you got? There's some Swedish crispy rolls and some Scottish oat kicks. It's a mobile delicatessen basically, it's what we've got. Oh, let's go down the Spey River in November. The weather should be fine. Whoa! Whoa, look at this! What is going on? It's like my uh, uh, red penguin suit. <laughs> you won't mess around. <laughs> well, it's for sea kayak and this goes over your cockpit cover as well if you want it to, but it works. And you can also look at this. Like, tuck yourself away in it. I, I noticed, Ray, you, you carry your own spoon. Best equipped expedition paddlers, spoon at the ready. <laughs> I'm eating some rhubarb chutney, homemade rhubarb chutney, spicy chutney, which is pretty good, even though I say so myself. <laughs> That's because you made it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Would <laughs> <laughs> you like some? <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? We got tonight for the first night on the Spey something reasonably fitting. The Spey headwaters are up near Dalwhinnie, a bit below Dalwhinnie. They come down through King Ussie, and so we've got a, a Dalwhinnie Winter's Gold, which is a really nice, rich, warming. Did you choose Winter's Gold because it's it's cold out? It's November. Winter's Gold. Or winter's, winter's cold. gold. Yes. Winter is cold. Yes. Yes. Oh bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> Camera's nearly dead. Okay, mm. talk quick. All right. What we're having, Kevin? What? what? What have you had? Well, Java. Java. And Java cake, which is what? Not Java cake. Jaffa cake. Java. Double F, not a V. Jaffa. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Java cake. Jaffa. Like, like I said, the quick version. Oh, the quick version. <laughs> and custard. Yeah. How's that? That's amazing. And a little what? bit of 
whiskey. This on top, which, which is what in, in Canada we call this the uh, maple syrup. Yeah, I like yes. it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm missing out. Well, too bad for you. Mm. Blah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. It was good. <laughs> you were sous chef. It was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> he is my sous chef. Well, thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> I should have married you when I had the chance. Ooh, look at this. It's a, it's a terrible meal we're having on the river in Scotland. Um, it's full of pegas. We finally killed one. That's just not. It's something Paul made. It's very lovely. Uh, he put tuna, pepper, onion, garlic, celery, mm -hmm. uh, love and kisses. Like, you do have a girlfriend, right? Yeah. Just one? Just one. <laughs> <laughs> but does he have a boyfriend, Kevin? You cook like this, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I switch in a giant. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, I'm a terrible cook. I can't cook for toffee, mate. <laughs>